because I have glow-in-the-dark cosmic band-aids. I have cosmic fun-shaped pineapple slices at home. I have Hubble telescope refrigerator magnets. This, the announcement came that the Hubble might not be fixed. The loudest voices were not NASA, it was not the astrophysicist, it was the public. Op-eds and debates. You know what that told me? The public took ownership of the Hubble telescope. It no longer belonged to the scientists, it belonged to the, pub the public. Of course, the public paid for it. But wh when was the last time you heard of the public rallying behind a scientific instrument? That has never happened, ever. Ever. Now, so what is culture? I'm going to tell you what culture is. Go to Italy. Go in a grocery store. One of the aisles will be completely lined with pasta. You can't help but notice that. They got pasta that you'd never even see over here. Pasta with no numerals that, pasta 12, you know, what is that? You know, that's a fusilli with a, you know, whatever. It's got them all. Do you think Italians notice that they have an entire aisle of pasta? It goes unremarked upon. Go to the Far East. There's the rice aisle. So then I asked someone from the Far East, what, a, what in our country looks like that to you? They said, the soda aisle. <laughs> Nobody else in the world has an entire aisle of soda. But to us, it's just the soda aisle. We don't think that that's weird. Another one, the ready to eat breakfast cereal aisle. <laughs> Nobody else has that. So the fact that you don't notice it means it's our culture. We invented ready to eat breakfast cereals. So you don't notice that it's there. We pioneered carbonated beverages. So you don't notice that they're there. Columbia gets launched. Nobody notices. Nobody can recite the names of the astronauts. Columbia breaks up on re-entry. The nation stops and mourns. That is not the behavior of a country that does not care. That's simply the behavior of a country who doesn't notice that it's there because it's our culture, but we sure as hell notice when it's not there. That's the definition of culture. How deep does this go? It goes deep. It goes deep. I was on the Today Show, July 1st. Why? What happened then? The Cassini spacecraft pulled into orbit around Saturn. There was nothing scientific about it. It just pulled into orbit. The Today Show figured that was news enough to put, not in their second hour with the recipes, it was in the first 20 minutes. It was in the first 20 minutes. So I get up, so I'm, I'm an easy date for them because I'm six blocks north of the headquarters. So they call me in, they first talk to the guys, you know, and the women and the engineers, and they're jumping up and down. They come to me and say, what does this mean? They said, congratulations, what is it? I said, well, it's great. We're going to study Saturn and do loop-the-loops and study the moons. And he says, that's great. But then Matt Lauer wanted to be hard-hitting, and he said, but Dr. Tyson, this $3.2 billion mission given all the problems we have in the world today, how can you justify that expenditure? So I said, pause. It, first of all, it's 3.2 billion divided by 12. It's a 12 year mission. So that's, then now we got the real number. It's like what, 300 million. Then I said, $300 million, hmm. Americans spend more than that a year on lip balm. When I said that, like the camera shook and the lights, the light, it was like, and, and, and Matt had no reply. He, he stuttered after that. And he said, oh, we'll go to commercial, okay? And I said, hmm, people don't know how little this is. So I came out of the green room. You know, they have uh, uh, bystanders out front who watch through the glass. I didn't know they also piped the audio signal. So I'm on my way out, and all the people hanging outside the door, up came this applause. And everyone held up their chapstick, said, we want to go to Saturn. So I said, yes! <laughs> I 
I want to start the chapstick movement. That's what I want to do. Three examples and I'm out of here. One, uh, this is real. It's real. The penetration is deep and it's not just among the engineers. I took a very short taxi ride recently and the driver, a young kid, couldn't have been more than 20 something, 23. He's one of these talky, so I learned like he's married, he's got a kid, okay. And he says, wait a minute, he's, he's like driving the car and I'm in the back seat. And in New York there's like these, there's a, there's a barrier there between you and the front seat. So it's, it's not like you're communing with the driver. So the sound has to like go through the channel to get. So he says, wait a minute, I think I recognize your voice. So I said, yeah, right, I will, fine, okay. No, no, I'm serious, I'm serious. I said, well, he said, are you an expert on the galaxy? So I said, uh, uh, yeah, I, yeah, I guess, yeah, yeah. And he says, wow, I saw this program and you were on it. It was, it was, it was the best. It was it. And now here's what's interesting. If he was interested in me for the simple point of celebrity, that's a different kind of encounter. You know what that is? That's, well, where do you live and what's your favorite color? And, you know, but no. He started asking questions. Tell me more about black holes. Tell me more about the galaxy. Tell me more about the search for life. We get to the destination. I'm ready to hand him the money. He says, no, keep it. This, is, this guy's got a kid. I mean, he's 23 years old with kids at home, driving a taxi. I'm trying to pay him for this ride and he declines it. That's how excited he is that he could learn about the universe. I'm walking my daughter to school. They open the school nine months later. She's back there now. I'm ready to cross the street with her. This garbage truck, ready to pass in front, stops right in the crosswalk. Garbage trucks don't stop and cross. This one stopped. And I'm thinking, I remember some movie where the garbage truck came by and then the guy wasn't there after it drove by. I remember some movie about that. I, so this worried me a little. Then the driver opens the door. I don't know this man from a hole in the wall. He says, Dr. Tyson, how are the planets today? And that was like, I wanted to like go and kiss him, you know? But the best of them all was at the Rose Center for Earth and Space where I work. There's a janitor there. He's never said a word for the three years he's been working there. I've never seen him communicate with anyone. And you never know who comes in at these entry level positions, what, you know, maybe he's mute, is he uh, slow? I don't know, I just don't know. And just one day out of the blue, one day out of the blue, he stops sweeping and holds onto his mop proudly, I mean, you know, with, 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 with posture, it says, Dr. Tyson, I, I, I have a question. Do you have a minute? And I'm thinking he's going to ask about like the employment situation. What? I said, yeah, sure, go ahead. He said, I've been thinking. I see all these pictures from the Hubble telescope. And I see all of these gas clouds. And I learned that stars are made of gas. So could it be true that these stars were made in those gas clouds? This is the janitor that didn't say a word for three years, and his first sentence to me is about interstellar medium astrophysics. So I ran up to my office, got all seven of my books, handed it to him, and said, here, okay, take it. Just, just commune with the cosmos. You need more of this. I'm gonna end with two quotes. one I acquired a couple of weeks ago. I was gonna show a picture of the kid who said this quote, but we, we weren't equipped for this. So I, I'm gonna read it to you. There are lots of things I have to do to become an astronaut. But first, I have to go to kindergarten. <laughs> it was a four-year-old kid. Let me say this.